Before we begin, I'd like to emphasize that this podcast is an extension of my surgical work and research at Visionary Eye Doctors. And thank you all for tuning in every week or multiple times to kind of hear our about our research and how we help patients. And thank you to all of you who have flown in from all over the world to see us here. So I'm very humbled by that. So it is my hope and desire to keep this information free to all of you, especially to my dear patients. And in keeping with this mission, we are very thankful to our first sponsor for the podcast wizard dry eye mask many of you have heard me talk about the wizard before i have loved this product for years it looks like this i have one right next to my bed so does my husband i used mine last night and even you know if i can't sleep i'll use it uh, it's a wonderful product that you just plug in next to your bed or even at your computer i've been known if i start to develop a style to do the wizard as i type and then switch you know if i have warm just like a warm compress so it works wonderful for that so thank you to the wizard if you mention our name uh, podcast visionary eye doctors dr kramers they'll give you a one-year guarantee if anything happens to the product just call them up and they'll replace it for you for free so thank you to the wizard research team for sponsoring this podcast enjoy Hi, it's Dr. Sandy Kramers, one of the board certified eye surgeons at Visionary Eye Doctors. Today, we're gonna kind of follow up with our previous podcast on red light therapy, also known as low level therapy. And as I mentioned previously, I had a patient come in stating that they had noticed some green light in their vision after they had used their light stim device. And so after some kind of understanding the process, it makes sense why he saw the green light afterwards. We're gonna go into that today. Today. So I was very impressed by how many doctors have talked about which device to have, which one to buy, is it worth your money, how it works, but very few doctors are talking about the safety of red light therapy, specifically for the eyeballs, the retina, the lens. We're going to go into all of that today. So just to recap what red light therapy is, we're talking about low-level light therapy, and what we mean by that is we're looking at certain types of wavelengths of light. A wavelength is just the distance between two two peaks or troughs of a wave, and that's how we see our light. When you're looking at me, you're allowing the visible spectrum of light, which is roughly from 500, uh, well, three, we'd say 400 to about 500 nanometers, which means the light of the wavelength of the light that's touching your macula. So we take a spectrum, whether it's intense pulse light, which is roughly between 500 to 1200 nanometers. We use that to help heal tissue or help decrease kind of the wrinkles sometimes on the face and of course use it for dry eye disease and helping those meibomian glands and so intense pulse light has been documented and published for that use and for of course hair removal and tattoo removal for years by dermatologists and the similar idea with red light therapy which has a different range of the visible spectrum and the gold standard is about 633 nanometers so it's a different type of specific spectrum of light. And so that has also been used for years, as I mentioned previously, the earliest published paper, 1924, to use red light therapy. So it does work through photobiomodulation, which means that the light is actually, without heat, without damaging tissue, is actually activating cytochrome C oxidase to increase the ATP, or energy, in your mitochondria, which is the powerhouse of the cell. And that's the beauty of it, is it really does seem to actually help the underlying protein structures of your skin, and even the meibomian gland, to kind of help that energy improve the function of the cell. In the skin, it improves the structural proteins of the skin like collagenase and elastin. And similarly, in the meibomian gland, it appears to help produce and increase the lipid production. But what about the safety? And so that has been something that's been a little bit more kind of interesting to research. As I mentioned previously, the red light therapy has been used in cases to decrease drusen in macular degeneration. And my dear friend at Mass Eye near at Harvard just texted me this morning saying, Mass Eye is about to buy their first red light therapy device. She doesn't know the name, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's something called Lumithera's company. Uh, the device is called Valdera, which has been studied in some published indications that red light therapy in certain wavelengths, and their machine has the documented wavelength of 630 nanometers, 660 nanometers, and 830 nanometers, which is near infrared. 
to decrease drusen. So the fact that Mass Ioneer and Harvard, which is Harvard, is essentially buying a machine to use red light therapy to the retina is a good idea, which is amazing. It's kind of interesting that we've gone to this direction. So when you're at home, what device should you get? And do you need goggles? That's what the question is. I would say if you are buying a, I guess the general risk of red light therapy is the eye. You know, are you causing macular degeneration if you're buying a knockoff Chinese version that you don't know what the wavelength is and then therefore yeah you should probably use red light and if you look at the like websites of these of these companies all the Chinese workers are using goggles so if you're not sure what you're doing I think it's probably a good idea to use some type of either plastic goggles or metal goggles and so my patient didn't use any goggles because most of these red light therapies just have a cutout I know there's one by a doctor that does have a little bit of a kind of protective component on the eyelid Dr. Sam Ellis one of the dermatologists with a uh, kind of YouTube video mentioned she doesn't like to use anything over her eyes. She just closes her eyes because she does want the red light to touch her eyelid uh, margin. And so far, we don't have data to say it causes a cataract or worsens macular degeneration, but I would just be careful. Make sure that you're using a very respectable brand that ideally has FDA approval or a CE mark from Europe to indicate that it's safe. And obviously, if you're seeing green light afterwards, maybe think about putting some type of cover or a goggle on to protect those rods and cones, specifically the cones, from being stimulated by the red light. So I cannot say that I have data in humans to say red light is dangerous for the eyes. There's been a couple of papers in rabbits that have showed that extensive long-term red light theoretically could be concerning for the retina and even in the kind of violet or blue range potentially causing a cataract. But I haven't seen that replicated in humans. So we're still early in the wild west, still of red light therapy when it comes to its ocular applications. And of course, for my bombing gland dysfunction and dry eye disease. So just to kind of nerd out a little bit about the actual mechanism of red light so we can all understand when you're looking at a device, and some of the doctors have mentioned this in previous kind of YouTube videos, you want to really ask the company and find out on the device what is the wavelength which I remember this by the mnemonic whites WH is wavelength the I is irradiance the T is the treatment time, and the E is the efficacy or fluence. So W-H-I-T-E-S, whites, is how you are looking when you're looking at the device online. You want to make sure the manufacturer tells you the wavelength, the irradiance, which is basically the power density of how much power you're getting when you're using it, the uh, treatment time, and the efficacy or fluence. Those are the kind of four parameters you want to be looking at. And then, of course, you want to look and see if it's a kind of the size and the type of style. Some people like the flexible one. Some people like a hard one that kind of fits on your face. It just stays there. The flexible one is nice because you can use it for your neck and chest dermatologists have said the one in your face obviously just stays there and then of course the price range and the price range is really incredible light stim the one my patient came in with can go for as much as thirty eight thousand dollars i was looking on ebay and there's one on sale for thirty eight thousand on ebay and it's kind of a full body uh, kind of red light therapy. Dermatologists will buy this for their practice to apply it for that reason. There's another great company uh, that I'm going to go through a couple of them. The, one of my uh, dear friends who's a trauma surgeon at Jackson kind of has been looking at this, trying to purchase one. And so she did a whole bunch of research that I'll probably put on my blog or share with you guys. You can kind of get an idea. But let me just read a little bit to you so you can get an idea of what is available. And so the top ones, if I were to buy one, this is probably what I would look for first. So light Stim for sure is one of the highest class ones. Its wavelength is three, 633 uh, and then 830. It has an irradiance of 30 milliwatts per centimeter and the treatment time generally is 10 minutes three to five times a week. Uh, it has a 18 joule per centimeter fluence. It has a two-year warranty and you can go to the website. So that's probably like one of the top uh, with dermatologists buy this one as well as Cellumma, which is similar in terms of the way it works. It's just a matter of which one is less expensive Expensive. Cellula was less expensive than light stim. Uh, there's been papers to kind of indicate both are effective. So those are the high end. The ones you can buy at home that are less expensive, the probably the biggest one is called Omnilux Contour. And there have been other people who have noted that the light salon boost mask or current body is also at the top. But then 
she went down through every single one. So there's like 20 of these. And just to read out a couple of her top priorities that she's looking into, those are probably the ones I would go with Omnilux if I were to buy one. But there's, of course, Priori, Unveiled, Face, Light, Desay Express, Boots Number 7, Defying LED Mask, Spectra Light Face Wear Pro, LG Pro, Derma LED Mask, Opera, Lee Body, and it goes on and on. So she's done quite a bit of research to see which one is the best for her. And again, it just depends a little bit on, do you want to be able to walk around while you have the mask on? Do you want to lie down? Do you want a hard mask, a flexible mask? But in terms of the eyes, really, I would say that if it were me, I would definitely close my eyes, unless I have maybe macular degeneration, and then maybe I would open my eyes as long as it's like in that 633 nanometer kind of mark. Um, and 830, the one that Mass Ioneer is going to buy has that 830 nanometer wavelength as well. So that time will tell. I don't think it's going to harm you per se. But if you're seeing green light, I would definitely buy a little plastic cover or metal cover just to protect your eyes in the meantime. And so that's the basic situation of what's happening with red light therapy. If you have interest in letting having us buy some of these devices or you have a device you want me to review, please let us know. Send it to us. We'd be happy to do that. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Please subscribe. Please send it to friends and family because that's the best thing you can do to help us here at Visionary Eye Doctors. Have a great day.